In this paper, Apple is showing that LLMs might not actually be reasoning. They are just memorizing reasoning steps from the training data. If they give it the same question, they just change names. So for example, instead of saying Mike bought six apples, they say uh, Victor bought six apples. There are huge variations in accuracy. Sometimes LLMs are not able to solve the same question if just the name was changed. So in this graph, we can see the accuracy variation just if we change names, it's the green line. Just if we change names, sometimes the accuracy is around 89% or 84, sorry. Sometimes it goes up to 95% just by changing names. And then if we change numbers, the variation gets even greater and the accuracy drops. And then if we change both names and numbers, even though the logical reasoning steps should be exact the same, human could solve the same task easily. The variation on the accuracy uh, increases even more. So variation in accuracy means that for the same task, LLM is sometimes able to solve it, sometimes it's not able to solve it. And they just change the name or they just change the numbers, but the reasoning steps are the same. And now let's begin with the paper. They believe that current LLMs are not capable of genuine logical reasoning. Instead, they attempt to replicate the reasoning steps observed in their training data. Changing a single clause that appears relevant but is irrelevant creates a performance drop up to 65%. So they just change name in like some math task. Instead of Mary did this, they say Jane did this. GSM 8K is a popular grade school math uh, question dataset. They extend that dataset and convert it to GSM symbolic, which is basically just uh, replacing some constant with variables. Now you have different names, they can use different names, different uh, numbers, family, etc. And so they can test if the LLM is really logically reasoning or it just memorized this GSM dataset maybe. So just by changing names or numbers, humans are able to apply the same reasoning uh, step logic and get to the correct solution, but LLMs seem not to be. And LLMs have a lot of variation uh, in their answers, in their reasoning steps, depending on like these variables that are irrelevant to their reasoning steps. We show that the performance of all models drops on uh, GSM symbolic, hinting at potential data contamination, meaning that the LLMs were trained on this like benchmark itself, because the benchmark itself is very popular and there is a lot of it, a lot of the questions on the internet and in training data. So if they just change names, it's not as bad, but if they change numbers, then it becomes a lot worse for the LLMs and they are not able to solve it as well, indicating that LLMs reasoning capabilities struggle with increased complexity. Then they also create this GSM no op dataset, which basically just adds irrelevant information to the question. So for example, uh, he bought uh, five apples, ate three apples, but two of those three apples were smaller how many apples does he left? So the irrelevant information is two of those apples were small, that's irrelevant. But the uh, LLMs experience up to 65% drop. Uh, maybe not this much at every question, but just because of these irrelevant questions. This suggests deeper issues in their reasoning process that cannot be alleviated by in-context shots and needs further investigations. So maybe the architecture is not good or the training is not good. So it could be that when LLMs are reasoning, they're actually just trying to match what they've seen in the training data. So they're not actually thinking by themselves, they're just trying to apply the same steps as in training data. Important sentence, while this process goes beyond naive memorization of words and the models are capable of searching and matching more abstract reasoning steps, it still falls short of true formal reasoning. There is also this uh, research that shows that if a single token in the LLM input changes, the whole reasoning steps change. And then this research argues that if you have a task that requires multiple correct reasoning steps, that is multiple correct tokens 
one after another. Then the longer the requirement for correct tokens, correct reasoning steps, uh, the probability of success for the LLM decreases exponentially or decreases exponentially with the number of tokens. But this work will not only criticize LLM's reasoning, it will also pave the way for further research on this important topic. So GSM8K dataset includes over 8,000 grade school math questions and answers, divided into training and testing sets. The problem is this dataset is very popular, so maybe parts of it can be found on the internet which is used for LLM's training data. So it's basically memorizing uh, the reasoning steps. Maybe not memorizing the answers, but memorizing reasoning steps is what this paper argues. So this is how they create their uh, data set GSM symbolic. So they take uh, these uh, questions and then just replace like numbers and names and stuff with templates and then generate uh, them and then uh, it automatically like check if the answers are correct and stuff. They test a lot of open source models from 2B to 27 billion parameters. Then they also uh, test GPT-40, Omni GPT-4, Mini, sorry, GPT-40, O1 Mini and O1 Preview. So they got 100 templates and each template generated 50 samples. So one template has these variables and then uh, there are like 50 different uh, samples where like they choose like these numbers, these names, these numbers, these names, these numbers, etc. Here we have some graphs of their experiment. So let's look at uh, GPT-40. On the x-axis, we have accuracy. Uh, and then on the y-axis, we have frequency. So they conducted multiple experiments. The only difference between those experiments is in numbers and names and these variables. And so uh, there is, a, so, so if the AI is applying same correct reasoning steps, the accuracy should be always the same but there is big difference between accuracies here so this guy goes from uh, like 91.5 percent to 98 percent depending just like if you change names and numbers which should not happen and so the most frequent accuracy is around 95 percent for gpt40 but it can go as low as 91 percent maybe it can go even lower i'm not sure if maybe they didn't show it on some of these like questions so so they just divided 5,000 questions into, I think, 100, 100, 100, 100, and like that, and then tested them. Also, uh, this dashed line is uh, GSM 8K, which should not be, so usually it's on the right side. So for some reason, it's performing really well on this uh, data set, even though this data set is just a single draw from this, uh, like, uh, GSM symbolic. So it's just one of the variations because it's performing so well and so much better than the average that means like it may maybe memorize this from the training data that's why it's performing so much better on these particular numbers and names and stuff so now uh, gsm 8k this is the popular one and then gsm symbolic this is the same one with different numbers and stuff so there is a big performance drop for each of these models from uh, gsm 8k to gsm symbolic so as soon as they see different numbers that were not in the database, in the training data, sorry. So like uh, Mistral 7B minus 9.2% all the way to GPT-40 minus 0.3%. So it might also appear just from this graph that these bigger models are less susceptible. Uh, and they could be reasoning more, but we, will not, we are not sure if this is true reasoning. So let's uh, read further. Just for the previous graph, I forgot to mention that there are variations in performance by 12%, sometimes even 15%. It is interesting that this variation uh, even exists as the only difference across different instances of each question are the changes in name and uh, values. While the overall reasoning steps needed to solve a question remain the same. And also here, if we have a performance drop of 0.3%, uh, that might be negligible because maybe even humans would just uh, like have that variance if humans were doing these different tasks. How sensitive are LLMs when we change only names, only proper numbers or both names and numbers? Now guys, if you just change names, there should be absolutely zero, zero variance or something like close to zero. But here, 
uh, names in greens, a green color, we can see that there is a lot of variance as well. And so we have accuracy and frequency. So frequency is like uh, how often this score, this accuracy uh, was achieved by the model. So most frequent accuracy is around uh, 88% here for name, uh, for different names. As soon as we change numbers, the accuracy not only drops, but also it becomes uh, more varied. And then if we change both, it drops even more and becomes even more varied. And this applies for all of them. Now we can see that in some of them, there is a bigger drop and bigger uh, var variance. And for example, in Lava 3, Lama 3 8B, it stays pretty much the same, but there is still a huge variance, around 10% or more of variance. It is both striking and concerning that such performance variance exists when only changing proper names, as this level of variability would not be expected from a grade school student with genuine mathematical understanding. So these students would not have 10% or 15% variance in correct answers just if you change the names in the in the tasks then they also test task difficulty against performance of the model so they have different levels of uh, gsm symbolic difficulty so the original one would be to make a call from a phone booth you must pay 0 0.6 dollars for each minute of your call after 10 minutes that price drops to 0 0.5 per minute how much would a 60 minute call cost this is the original question to make it easier, they call it uh, GSM symbolic M1. So uh, they just remove like this part where it scales. So now it's just $0.6. How much does it cost uh, for a 60 minute call? And then to make it harder, they uh, call it P1 and P2. So P1, uh, after 25 minutes from the start of the call, the price drops even more to $0.3 uh, dollars per minute. So we have original one drop and then another drop how much is 60 minutes and then this one if you uh, if your total bill is more than ten dollars you get a 25 percent discount this was what they added to p2 as well okay so we can see the graphs here so this is the easiest one the green one and then uh, harder harder and the uh, hardest one so as we increase the difficulty not only does accuracy decrease, which is maybe even expected, but the variance also uh, increases. So it's more varied. We can also see that stronger models like O1 Mini and uh, 4O Mini and 4O are less susceptible when you go from really easy to quite easy. So they, are al they have almost the same distribution here. But when you then go to super hard, it, the distribution becomes very uh, stretched out and varied. And then these uh, smaller models are more susceptible to even when you go from super easy to easy. So this is interesting. Maybe there is some kind of reasoning here. So the reasoning that's strong enough to do these simpler tasks. But is it the case? Let's uh, read the paper further. Or are they just better at uh, memorizing and then applying reasoning steps, but maybe that could even be reasoning, so let's see. Considering the pattern matching hypothesis, the increase in variance suggests that searching and pattern matching become significantly harder for models that, as the difficulty increases. But to be honest, this could also support the hypothesis that harder tasks are more difficult to solve, even though the models could be reasoning. So that's why accuracy drops, just because tasks are harder, maybe. Then they also have this GSM no op, which is basically adding irrelevant information. So for example, uh, there are like numbers, 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 but five of the kiwis were a bit smaller than the average, which is absolutely irrelevant in the calculations. But even O1 mini makes a mistake. However, on Sunday, five of these kiwis were smaller than the average, we need to subtract them from the Sunday total. No, you don't. The majority of models fail to ignore these statements and blindly convert them into operations leading to mistakes. And this could actually suggest that uh, they are just memorizing reasoning steps.
So they are just applying reasoning steps, not actually reasoning. The name no op comes from no operational significance. An interesting observation is that models tend to blindly subtract the number of smaller fruits, potentially because the training dataset included similar examples that required conversion to subtraction operations. Overall, we find that models tend to convert statements to operations without truly understanding their meaning. For instance, a common case we observe is that models interpret statement about discount as multiplication, regardless of the context. So, uh, for example, if they talk about some price and they say discount is in Germany is 10%, but this is irrelevant to like this uh, context, they just apply 10% discount, even though it's in Germany, it's irrelevant. But this was my example to explain to you, this example about Germany does not exist in this paper. So this is performance drop from GSM 8K to GSM no op. Now we already know that it might be actually trained on this. So this performance will be even higher. And now this uh, no op accuracy. So this is going to be even lower. So uh, O1 preview goes by minus 17.5%. And then all of these smaller models go even like have even higher performance drop. But this includes two issues. The first issue is that it's been trained on this data, it's been contaminated on this uh, testing with this testing data and also uh, the no op problem of confusing the model. Let's take a look at these graphs to the side. So we have accuracy, eight shot accuracy. Okay, so um, we have questions and shot source. Let's just take a look at this no op, no op, no op, no op. So uh, they provided eight shots, eight examples of different questions from no op data set and the answers, correct answers into the prompt. And then they asked another question at the end from again, no op data set. So in these eight shots, eight examples, they show they completely ignore the irrelevant statement and they give the correct answer. And then they test if the ninth question in the prompt the AI will also properly ignore the irrelevant and then give the proper answer. So you see how lower the accuracy is than these other examples where they provide eight shots from GSM and then question from GSM and then GSM and then symbolic. So even so again, uh, just by having the question, even though it has correct answers examples, it still underperforms. Now let's look at no op symbolic. So here they have the same question, just uh, different values. So they have eight uh, of the same question from symbolic and then they add in the end no op question. So the same question, also different values, but they also add this irrelevant statement. And you can see that here it performs also very low, even though it has the exact same question, exact same reasoning step with just different values eight times and it performs uh, very uh, low compared to these other uh, combinations. But then in some models, it performs really well because uh, these models are able to capture that this is the same question, just different numbers. And then there is a relevant statement as well. Also, I think, although I'm not exactly sure, I think these models are older and their training data is not contaminated with this GSM data set. So that's why they have lower performance here. But if you give them a bunch of shots, but they also give them a bunch of shots here. So I'm not really sure like why this is uh, so low here. If maybe somebody can explain in the comments. Or I'll try to email the authors and if they reply, I'm going to uh, put the explanation in the first pinned comment. LLM struggle even when provided with multiple examples of the same question or examples containing similar irrelevant information. LLMs may have sophisticated pattern matching rather than uh, true logical reasoning. We believe further research is essential to develop AI models capable of formal reasoning, moving beyond pattern recognition to achieve more robust and generalizable problem solving skills. This remains a critical challenge for the field as we strive to create systems with human-like cognitive abilities or general intelligence. Thank you for watching. Check out my channel for the latest, greatest AI research. I'm making a couple of these even maybe every day. So see you in the next video.